In our quest to achieve a life well lived, each individual, consciously or not, selects a supreme value to direct their path. For many, this value materializes in the form of wealth. For others, it can manifest as status, social recognition, happiness, delight, love, knowledge or comfort. In this video, based on the insights of the philosopher Nietzsche, we will argue that in order to maximize our well-being and fulfillment, the highest value we should prioritize is power. Many individuals connect the concept of power with the ability to dominate others, putting them at the service of their needs and desires. However, this is not the kind of power that Nietzsche had in mind. For him, the desire to control others often emerges as a manifestation of weakness or an inferiority complex. This desire seeks to represent a form of superiority. The instinct leads down tortuous paths towards tyranny over those who are healthier. This is not something that can be discovered. This is the will to power of the less empowered. Rather than seeing power as Machiavellian control over others, the kind of power that Nietzsche argued we should aim for is a power that we internalize and express internally. A power, in other words, that amounts to what he called growth and expansion, or as another philosopher mentioned, the enhancement of an already existing capacity or activity. For example, an athlete who strengthens their muscles is amplifying their power, a writer who improves their writing is amplifying their power, an orator who develops their public speaking skills, an educator who improves their ability to teach. In Nietzsche's book Values, John Richardson states, power is more life, not only by its simple continuation or multiplication, but by its ability to raise life to a higher level of ability and control. Power is the transition to a higher level, a self-overcoming. The goal of my life is my growth or strengthening, and that lies not just in expanding, but in rising. This implies overcoming previous states of oneself. In Nietzsche's writings, we find guidance on how to achieve this power. The first step is to define a purpose that meets four criteria. Firstly, the goal must be meaningful and challenging. Secondly, it must promote our health and well-being, or the well-being of others. Thirdly, it must favor the achievement of personal excellence. Fourthly, it must be a personal choice, an expression of our uniqueness and genuine aspirations. Or, as Nietzsche wrote, as for humanity's purpose here on earth, that should not be a concern. What you should ask yourself is why you are here. And if you don't have a ready answer, then set yourself noble and lofty goals. Once we have formulated a goal that fulfills these four requirements, the second step to achieving power is to dedicate consistent time on a daily basis to achieving it. And in doing so, we will inevitably come up against obstacles and resistance. Uncertainty, fear, anxiety and inertia will affect us. Lack of time or resources, the doubts and criticisms of others, or the vicissitudes of our health or relationships, will obstruct our progress. However, in the context of the quest for power, the obstacles, the resistance that comes our way represents an opportunity. Facing resistance means expanding the limits of our mind and body, seeking to overcome it. Through resistance, we expand our power, transforming challenges into valuable assets for those who seek power, in a similar way to how a skillful opponent or adversary is valuable to an ambitious warrior. A warrior's skill increases when he faces a worthy opponent. Resistances act as catalysts that push us to improve our abilities and overcome our weaknesses. Or as Nietzsche once put it, the will to power can only manifest itself in the face of resistance. It seeks that which challenges it. All expansion, incorporation, growth, is a battle against something that resists. A robust nature needs resistance, so it seeks it. So. If we adopt Nietzsche's perspective on the game between resistance and victory, 
where an obstacle overcome is immediately followed by another obstacle to be conquered, we will increase our power and, over time, achieve the goal we have set for ourselves. The third step is then to put the goal and all our achievements, creations and progress behind us and set our sights on the next goal, which is more far-reaching and challenging. Whatever we have created, however much we love it, we must eventually overcome it and leave it behind. The will yearns for this. Or, as the philosopher Bernard put it in more detail, he who desires power must not, in fact, destroy what he has created or despise what he loves. Instead, he must transcend what he has loved or created. The will to power soon drives him to consider that any creative achievement, any object attained through a specific desire, is no longer satisfactory, no longer sufficient. The seeker of power does not seek conquests per se, but new, fresh and perhaps greater challenges. This explains why the quest for power takes the form of growth or self-transcendence. In his book The Will to Power, Nietzsche explains that the quest for power has no final goal, unless the very joy derived from the cycle is the goal itself. In this context, the cycle represents the sequence of choosing a goal, facing and overcoming resistance, expanding our power, achieving the goal and then putting our creations and achievements behind us, restarting the cycle. When we structure our life around the quest for power, the quest for maximum potency, we reach a point in time, excluding death, where we stop participating in this cycle, this circle of power. Therefore, such a life has no final goal, unless we consider, as Nietzsche explained, that the goal is joy or great happiness. This happiness is a spontaneous byproduct of the constant increase in our power. And what is happiness if not a feeling that power is growing, that we are overcoming resistance? Joy is a symptom of feeling empowered. We don't seek joy, it accompanies us. What I appreciate about Nietzsche's worldview is that it doesn't require any blind belief, nor does it encourage us to place our hope for salvation in something external to us, be it a god, science, a politician or an ideology. This is a world outlook that offers a convincing solution to the problem of suffering. The question of suffering lies in the need for justification or meaning for the suffering we experience. Otherwise, we become vulnerable to nihilism, disenchantment with the world and an ingrained hatred of life. Nietzsche addresses this problem in the following passage. Man, the bravest creature familiar with suffering, does not repudiate suffering itself. He even seeks it out, as long as a meaning is attributed to it, a purpose is found for suffering. The absence of meaning in suffering, not suffering itself, has been the curse that has fallen on humanity until now. If you want to improve your control by the power and mastery of the mind, I've left a link in the first comment to help you. Nietzsche's ethics of power offers a practical solution to suffering. If we recognize power as the supreme value of humanity, a value that above all promotes individual flourishing, then we must also value the resistances that provide us with the opportunity to increase our power. In other words, suffering is delineated by resistance, it is a feeling of pain or affliction resulting from being impeded in some way. Therefore, if we attribute value to power, we must also attribute value to suffering, since it is a fundamental component of power. Or, as Nietzsche put it, Human beings do not seek pleasure and avoid discomfort. What they seek is an increase in power, driven by this will. They seek resistance, they crave something that opposes them. Discomfort, as an obstacle to the will to power, is therefore a common reality. Human beings don't avoid it, they continually crave it. Therefore, if we choose to engage in the cycle of power, the continuous cycle of overcoming, we will be promoting the realization of our potential, cultivating deep happiness and maintaining robust health, 
prerogatives for those who seek power. Pleasure emerges when we experience the sensation of power, happiness, in the triumphant awareness of power and conquest, of overcoming. Or, as Nietzsche wrote, thus spake Zarathustra, and life itself whispered the secret, Behold, she said, I am that which must constantly be overcome. If you think that your feelings still control your mind, here's how you can start controlling them. Click on the video on the screen and watch it now.